Or in the embassy evacuation, we are joined by Jamil Jaffer, founder and executive director of the National Security Institute. Jamil, it's always good to see you. Thank you for being here. Thanks for having me, Natasha. So the good news is that just under 100 Americans flown out in the cover of darkness safe now. But what about those 16,000 Americans still in the country? Realistically, is there any path forward to securing more successful extractions? Well, that's obviously the biggest concern here, Natasha. The embassy said that before they shut the embassy down, they were in touch with a few hundred Americans. But of course, we know there are over 10,000, maybe even up to 16, 17,000 Americans in Sudan at this time. And so the idea that the American embassy simply shut down and we evacuated our personnel without even making an effort to get those American citizens out is obviously deeply concerning, uh, not just for those 16,000 Americans there, but all of their families and friends here back at home. Certainly. And, you know, we just spoke with Joel Rubin last hour, formerly with the State Department under the Obama administration, and he mentions the risk of a vacuum if Sudan falls. Um, this all began with an attempt to transition to democracy there. Tell us more about this risk of a vacuum. Is it the risk of terrorism in that country? Well, I think the real risk is that you've got these two warring factions, one led by General Burhan, the other led by General Hamati, right? And they're they're essentially at war with one another. They both have very significant forces, the uh, forces uh, co coordinated by General Hamati, the former Janjaweed forces that were so uh, problematic uh, in the in in the in the Darfur situation. And General Burhan, having taken power now twice uh, from a civilian leader um, and not given up power, uh, this is a huge problem. And so a vacuum is one problem. Another problem is just constant warring until this issue is resolved. Um, this is a this is a big problem. And the idea that there are Americans just around that country with no path out and no plan right now from the U.S. government um, is, is something that the State Department really needs to wrap its, its head around and, and get right. There are Russian and Chinese interests in this country as well. Can you speak to that? And specifically in this moment, this crucial moment, Russia apparently seeking to destabilize Sudan. Why would they do that? Well, you know, we've seen the Wagner Group, which is the same group that's operating in Ukraine right now, uh, essentially a Russian front group uh, that's now operating in Sudan as well in support of the, the rapid support forces, which are the forces controlled by General Hamati. Um, you know, the Russians are always looking to gain more uh, more opportunities. Uh, they've long been running around Sudan, but this move by the Wagner Group is a significant move um, and one that's obviously concerning and causing problems in that region uh, as well as they are in Ukraine. OK, really appreciate that. Why do you think Americans should care about this conflict? What are you closely monitoring here? Well, one, at a minimum, there's 16,000 Americans there, so their lives are, are at risk, and that's one clear reason. Uh, the other reason is, look, Sudan is in a part of Africa that's been critical to the United States for a long time, that Horn of Africa, East Africa region, right? Um, we know that uh, that Osama bin Laden once found a home in Sudan back under President Bashir, eventually left Sudan for Afghanistan. So there is a risk of de of instability in Sudan that could spread around around the region and potentially broader across the globe. And so, you know, it's an, it's not a it's not an immediate strategic interest, but now with the American 16,000 lives there and the embassy completely shut down, Americans should be concerned and be demanding answers of the White House and the State Department about what are you going to do for those Americans that are now stranded with no embassy to go to, nobody to communicate with, would communicate with and no way out. Yeah, I think critically they have lost now um, that safeguard in the embassy no longer being there. I appreciate that point. Jamil Jaffer, always appreciate your time. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks, Natasha.